not every story has a happy ending. But sometimes, those are the stories worth telling. Instead, this story has a happy beginning. A beautiful beginning. Full of beauty, laughter, and love. So much love. I live on an island, the most beautiful island, Guam, where America's day begins. Most people leave, but they always make their way back. Some stay for the beaches, others say the food, but everyone knows the real reason, love. And on Guam, Love cannot exist without family. This is my husband, Vince. We fell in love and started a family. Our beautiful baby boy, Hunter, so happy, so loving. Vince had completed his medical residency in Arizona in 2013. It was time for us to come back home. But that's when our happy story took a drastic turn. Right before Hunter's second birthday, he started to act different, isolated, distant. It was as if he had floated off to another world, a world where I could not reach him, no matter how hard I tried. Ten months old, he was walking and running, and he was always good at feeding himself, holding a pen correctly, tracing. But when he turned three, like one day he just stopped trying to talk, or didn't want to say mom anymore, dad, nothing, just crying, hitting himself. He seemed to be developing normally, or typically, like as a typical child. Right? Um, but around one and a half, you know, not looking yeah. when we would call his name. Yeah, no eye contact. Be, yeah, exactly. Spinning, like, the hand flopping. I'm really saddened because here in Guam, there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of issues and there's a lack of experts and specialists in this area. There's a lack of occupational therapists, lack of uh, speech and language pathologists, lack of certified uh, behavioral analysts. Gosh, there's a gamut of autism specialists that aren't in existence here in Guam.
The isolation of living on an island never felt greater. Fear, sadness, hopelessness. Our dreams consumed of a life that once was. Every parent wants their child to be happy, to be safe. But the reality of our island's indifference with autism filled our hearts with fear and doubt. There have been times when people first learned that Dylan was autistic and they would straight up say, oh, I'm so sorry, it must be so hard. And you know, Maddie and I are like, why are you sorry? You know, this is this is my child. This is this is in a sense a gift for him to see the things that we don't. It's that I see that as a gift. Don't be sorry. It's it's an awesome life that we lead. There there are struggles, but who doesn't have struggles, right? I want my child to try, not to say he didn't know or he doesn't want to try. We're not going to give him a chance. We're going to do everything we can while he's developing. And he just wants to be like any other kid, you know, so. Going places, they look at you, you can hear them like, what's wrong with him? And there's, that hurts. I want to make sure that I live to be of a significantly old age and bury my child. That's one of my biggest fears is, is, Having to is dying before my son. Our children might be different, but they are no less than any other child. Why should we leave our home? Leave the ones we love. It's time for this chapter to come to an end. An end to the fears, the sadness, the hopelessness. Our children's future needs to be rewritten one of hope, of happiness, of love. Good afternoon, Senators. My name is Dr. Vinny Duenas. I'm an internal medicine physician practicing here on Guam, as well as the co-founder of Hunter Speaks Autism Organization. I'll be providing uh, testimony today in favor of Bill 16, Hunter's Law, uh, again, which was inspired by my five-year-old boy, Hunter, diagnosed with autism at age two. Autism is one of the most prevalent and debilitating disorders on the planet. It has been around for almost 80 years now, and still we have nothing to offer our island's kids. On Guam, intensive behavioral intervention is non-existent. The American Academy of Pediatrics, the Centers for Disease Control, and the New York State Department of Health all recommend a minimum of 25 to 40 hours per week of intensive behavioral therapy. Guam's children get none. As much as 10% of children with ASD 
have made so much progress with this type of intervention that they no longer meet the criteria for the diagnosis. Withholding or refusing medically necessary treatment may cause irreparable damage and can lead to detrimental long-term outcomes. Hunter Speaks organization humbly asks for your support in passing this bill so that our island's struggling children can finally get the services they so desperately need and deserve. Let's be the voice for those who cannot speak for themselves. Kind regards, Dr. Duenas. Not all stories have a happy ending. Sometimes it's the happy stories that have to fall apart so that better stories can come together. And this, this story has just begun. Bluer. proponent of people, BCBAs, BCABAs, Qualified Autism Specialists, thinking about moving here and making this their permanent residence or temporarily for a year or two uh, to help bring ABA therapy here and just enjoy the island. You get to play with kids like all the time and you get to teach them through play, you get to watch them grow, you get to watch them like make eye contact with you. <laughs> you get to like help their families too, which is amazing. I get to use ABA with my husband. <laughs> and adapt to his behavior and try to figure out the function of what he's saying. Um, that's it. I love ABA. Say, boy, you should know better than to have ever let anyone in. If you are a BCBA and are interested in assisting our cause, please visit our website. If you have any questions regarding ABA therapy, please feel free to contact us.
Hi, my name is Lola Rosario Brown, and I'm a BCBA and the clinical director for Hunter Speaks Guam. Teaching something and in two days he like has it totally mastered and we're just always like what it's really cool watching him like make eye contact with us and call us by our name or him engaging with us and like playing even with his peers here it's been super super exciting um, We worked on his communication really hard and he's now talking to us all day long telling us what he wants and because he can communicate better he's now less aggressive and engages in less self-injurious behavior he's just come such a long way he's done really really excellent we're really proud of him why the shaving cream seven months ago. I've been doing behavioral therapy for almost 10 years and it's crazy to me that we don't have techs lining up at the door because this is the best job I've ever had. It's the only job I want to have forever. I'm currently pursuing my credentials to be, become a BCBA and I encourage anybody who has a passion for working with children or individuals with special needs to come see what we're doing and join us because we are making waves and there are big things coming to Guam and I'm so thrilled to be a part of it and it's all I could ever ask for. Because we need more help, we need the BCBAs, like Hunter Speaks needs the support. Like we're doing like what we can for now and um, it has to grow because there's 266 kids with a diagnosis I believe here on Guam and it's just, it's just us right now. So it's just, it's really amazing and it's awesome to be a part of. <laughs> Thank you so much. We don't have to give up on our dreams for our children. We can dance ballet with our daughters and play baseball with our sons. We can make that happen, but it takes a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work and a big commitment, and that's why we love what we do. That's why we do it. If there is still light, and there's still love, there is still hope, just a flicker's enough. It only takes one single flame to cut through the dark and light the way. There is still light, and there is still love, there is still hope, just a flicker's enough. It only takes us coming together, making just one life better. If you are living on Guam and you're interested in becoming a registered behavior technician, if you have a passion for children and a passion for seeing them progress, then please also reach out to us. We could really use your help as well. And also because we're a nonprofit organization, we do really depend on the generosity of the community. And so if you're able to make a donation, please do also through our website, hunterspeaksguam.org.